Hey everyone, I am MSK, aka Master Swag King, coming at you guys today with another video. And in today's video, we are going to be going over the brand new Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG September 25th, 2023, Forbidden and Limited List update. So, I was at work when the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG Forbidden and Limited List actually got updated, so I just avoided any spaces that I would normally go to that would have caused me to get spoiled on the new updates to the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG Forbidden and Limited List actually. So if you guys remember the last update to the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG Forbidden and Limited List update, the Super Heavy Samurai Link Monster ended up getting banned actually and Super Heavy Samurai ended up getting new support in uh, was a Cyberstorm Access, actually, it is the set that, you know, Chaos Angel was in, and a lot of people thought that the Link Monster getting banned pretty much just killed the deck at being competitively viable anymore, which pretty much happened, actually. Purely ended up taking uh, that one quick play spell card for them, it ended up actually just getting hit, limited down to one. But purely was going to be otherwise okay by the common sentiment that I saw going around. And actually ended up performing very well at the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! 2023 NAWCQ. And purely ended up getting new support in Duelist Nexus actually, right? So, outside of that, uh, the last list that we got was actually pretty bad for the most part. And remember, like, we got Legendary Duelist Soul Burning Volcano and... As you guys know, that product came out and it pretty much just flopped, all things considered, right? So, hopefully, they put a uh, Salomon Great Gazelle back to at least two on this updated Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG Forbidden and Limitless update, actually. Because, what's the point of promoting a new product with certain cards from said archetype being a you know a main core of said archetype for a new product and you're not going to unleash... And you're not going to, let's say, like, release the cards from the list to otherwise further support that set. But now since Soul Burning Volcano has already been out, it wouldn't really make much sense now to put Gazelle to either 2 or 3 because Soul Burning Volcano already came out. But that's just how I personally feel about that right now. And... Uh, right here, the next update after this will be in a few months. So... What's a few months from now? Uh, we just got this. This list goes in effect, what, September 25th, actually? So a few months from that is... So right after Thanksgiving, or right as be at the beginning of December, actually. Yeah, because the last list that we got, what's really crazy is that was actually before Worlds, and we actually had that also before Nationals. And as you guys know, the, uh, the World Championship was... It was a something for Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, looking at how Pokemon put all this, like, effort, you know, into their, like, world championship for 2023. Like, you look at the Yu-Gi-Oh one and you're just like, this is so bad by comparison. And I'm a huge fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. I love Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. And, like, just seeing the way they treated the Master Duel finals, is it was just so bad, actually. I actually forgot what deck ended up winning uh, worlds, uh, wasn't it like Kashira or some shit? Like, let's be honest here, Kashira has been one of the best decks for a long time, for like, going on, what, three, four, five months or some shit? Like, Arise Heart's probably banned, I don't even need to look at this to know it's banned, they literally put it down to one last list, and I can just imagine it's banned at this point. Is Masterpiece unbanned? Like, that's what I want, this is what I want, probably even go to this list, you know? I want Masterpiece to 1, I want Salomon Great Gazelle to 3, and, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, asking, asking for Max C probably won't happen, but, you know, a man can dream, right? Like, you know, a man can dream about getting a blowjob from Scarlett Johansson, right? But it's only a dream, right? Alright, let's go slow. Alright. And I, I usually do a market watch after a, a new ban list actually has just dropped for us, but it will just... See how much that depends on, you know, how, oh, I mean, if my wife comes over and wants to blow me, right? No, it just depends on how many cards are here. But usually if there's, like, even a little bit of cards, I'll usually include them in a future Yu-Gi-Oh! Market Watch or just one right after this. All right. Uh, cast your Rise Heart. I mean, that, that should be a shocker to no one. I mean, this deck is just disgusting. You know, this is a really, really powerful deck. So I'm curious to see 
you know, what, what's the most interesting thing that a lot of people really don't understand about Yu-Gi-Oh! products is, like, a Yu-Gi-Oh! product doing well in the future and or right now really does depend on this as a list being good, right? So, I'll explain it to you guys. So, the new products you've been buying basically live or die by this because it literally basically says, hey, the money you invested potentially into these products is, is going to either just burn all in your face or it's just going to be just netting you you know lots of money actually right so then konami obviously has had cashier cards in the uh yugioh 25th anniversary dueling heroes tin right and they just banned a rice heart now i know this list goes effective september 25th actually but let's be honest here like basically if you pull any cashier cards Unless Cash Chira is going to be ended up utilized as an engine for something, that's going to end up hurting the tens even more. Like the tens already were, not say worthless, but the value was plummeting for the most part, right? Invoker's still here? Well, I mean, uh, I guess. I mean, one day it might come back, right? All right, what else is here? Looks like everything's, I mean, I haven't noticed anything, so. Vanity's Emptiness, is it still here? Yeah, it's still here. And Maxi's still here, right? Masterpiece is still here. Yep. Good old Konami. Constantly disappointing me. Just never ceases to amaze me. Actually, I can't really get dis disappointed if my, you know, <laughs> my expectations are already really low. You know what I mean? So, all right. Let's go to the limited section. What is limited? Bisteel. Oh, Bisteel Magma Hunt. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, Bisteels. Yeah, people have been asking for uh, Bisteel or Bisteel hits, actually. Sorry, I was messing up the name right there. People have been asking uh, for hits like this for a, a hot minute. And yeah, if you pull this out of a 10, yeah, that, that sucks. Man, it's just crazy how this list is probably going to make or break those 10s even worse than, you know, what they were already going for, as most of the cards in there were tanking in price, actually. All right, what else is here? What else is here? Wait, is Gazelle gone? Yeah, Gazelle has to have gone to three then. That would make Gazelle's not here. Yeah, Solomon Great Gazelle's not here. So they did a good thing. They know Soul Burning Volcano is tanking in the market. So they're going to put Solomon Great Gazelle back to two or three, which is great in my opinion. Solomon Great is back, baby. Let's go. Solomon Great players, stand up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I like having me some fun. Uh, what's uh, That's it? Chaos Space? Not gonna lie, this card's really, really good. Like, a lot of the strategies that I've seen play it, like, most of the ones that have been topping recently and for a while have been utilizing this card, it's really good. It's actually pretty insanely busted. So, Chaos Space is limited. Okay. Wait, have we only just had three cards? So, you have Arise Heart Band, Bestial Magma Hunt, limited, Chaos Space, limited, right? And now we're going to be on to the semi-limited section. Okay. That's all the same. And no longer on the list. Herald of Orange Light and Salomon Great Gazelle. All right. I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> I, I, just, I love Salomon Great, man. That's my boys right there. That's my deck. But holy effing freaking God. Like, I'm pretty happy about that. Because now I'm going to go on Master Duel. I play Solomon Gray all night, as you guys know. That's my boys right there. Um, But overall, I mean, I don't really know how to feel about this list. I mean, they, they probably could have did way more, if we're being completely honest here. This kind of just looks like some jank they just threw together. Like, Konami's been going through, let's say, a lot of issues recently. Like, we've seen, you know, that shareholders meeting that got leaked that they're having some massive issues not not like money wise but just not even understanding their player base i mean you have like that ruxin video that came out where it just detailed that certain local stores are not even carrying Yu-Gi-Oh anymore actually all right so let me go to tcg player like i could imagine that gazelle going back to three probably had some effect on uh soul burning uh volcanoes you know pricing like prices in general but i don't think it did honestly uh it did actually that actually makes a little bit of sense what's crazy is Salem gray gazelle going back to three automatically bumped up these cards prices so like i mentioned before 
you know, or sorry, you haven't seen those videos yet, but I do advocate that you guys get $30 boxes. I, I'll, I'll tell you to do it. I don't care. $30 boxes, good to me. All right, so Gazelle, obviously going to three, would bump up the prices of uh, Salomon Great Raging Phoenix, the ultra copies coming out of Legendary Duel Stormbear Volcano. Currently right now, this is going to be uh, $13, and it will end up bottoming out to around uh, $13.90 for the ultra copies of Salomon Great Raging Phoenix coming out of Legendary Duel Soul Burning Volcano. This card was actually tanking in value. It was literally around like six bucks before this new list came out. Now, um, give or take, how people will play Salomon Great competitively is going to also impact these card prices too because like gazelle can come to three but if no one's playing it, it, it the, then the prices will just go down in general right salmon grade of fire ultra copies coming out of legendary duel of soul burning volcano currently right now first edition rents 30 dollars bought into around 30 dollars for the ultra copies of salmon grade of fire coming out of legendary duelist soul burning volcano um the ghost rare salmon great sunlight wolf uh, these that come out of Legendary Duel of Soberning Volcano, these were like around 52 ish dollars, and now they're about $60, bottoming up to around like $66 for the Ghost Rare copies of Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf coming out of Legendary Duel of Soulburning Volcano, Salomon Great uh, Gazelle, and also Herald of Orange Light coming back, I mean that card as an ultimate rare, it's like 80 bucks for an ultimate rare, I mean that's gonna be, that's gonna be something right there. All right, so yeah, Gazelle's worthless in essentially most rarities it's in, honestly. All right, so now you have Salaman Great. All right, Salaman Great. Okay, so the cards from Soul Burning Volcano, spiked in value, would make perfect sense. I mean, literally, I said that in a previous channel deleted video where you bring back Gazelle is supposed to do that. Like, that's how a natural um, product push is supposed to be like you have a new product coming out where like it supports an archetype that has cards or more than one card hit on the list you bring those cards back to push your new product this is a easy example of that i don't know why they do that i don't know why they don't do that more because like let's be honest here this pushes sobering volcano if you're playing salomon great but if you have bought those tins, wow, like some of those prices are going to be definitely going down. Um, Yeah, that's pretty much it for that. And we're going to end up covering Herald of Herald of Orange Light. Like the ultimate rares are going to be disgusting. Like these are always worth like a couple bucks anyway, right? So let's do Herald of Orange Light. Let's just do in Yu-Gi-Oh because that, that'll give me like all of them right there. Yeah, so Herald of Orange Light, like the ultimate copies coming out of OTS Turner Pack 7. This right now currently is $80, bottoming to around $90 for the ultimate copies of Herald of Orange Light coming out of OTS Tournament Pack 7. So that covers, you know, the cards that are no longer on the list. This made perfect sense if you're trying to push, you know, uh, Legendary Duel of Soulburning Volcano. If you are trying to get people to buy that product more, encourage them and going, hey, one of the best, like, cards in the deck is no longer limited obviously i mean are people really gonna end up playing drytron because of this it might be a might be a sleeper strategy you never know uh but that is pretty much it i mean there's really not much here they honestly probably could have did way more and it's just typical konami could have did way more but you just kind of settled for some bullshit and then you're gonna just basically shit on a plate give it to us and just basically tell us it's like mashed potatoes and gravy and you know a lot of people are going to be doing that right and that's Kind of just it. Um, I have uh more videos coming out, obviously for you guys. I'll have a market watch where I'm, I'll cover like the, the all these cards in general. You know, I know like Magic Spectre got new support, so that probably caused a few of those cards to spike in value too. But what do you guys think about the brand new Yu-Gi-Oh TCG September twenty fifth, twenty twenty three Forbidden and Limited List update? So, um, I am MSK, and this is Online Cinema Entertainment, your one place for online cinema. All right, see you guys later. Deuces. Peace.